Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue. Today at Ronna McGolf Club in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, for the first annual first tee of Philadelphia Programs Invitational Classic. This is a star-studded field of celebrities. Hey, you don't believe me? Look who's behind me getting ready to tee off here at number one. The legendary Hall of Famer and Philadelphia 76er icon, Dr. J. Julius Irving. Green Billy Cunningham is here really as well. And Mike Quick, and well, like I said, a star-studded field here to help raise money for a great cause. We'll be back to meet some of the participants. We have a star-studded field today happening this week on Inside Golf. Inside Golf. Presented by Destination Montco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. By Jersey Man Magazine. It's a Jersey way of life. And Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA. Experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professionals. The first tee teaches you golf, but they also teach you life skills. We learn things you can use everywhere, every day. Hey like how to meet people you don't know. I'm Nicholas. It comes in handy on your first day of school. Or interviewing for a job. Thank you. Some of the best golf lessons have very little to do with golf. The life skills young people learn at the first tee stay with them long after they leave. Visit thefirsttee.org to learn more. Hi, I'm Janie. Let's play some golf. Welcome back to Inside Golf here at Aronomic for the, as it says here, the 2016 Celebrity Invitational that honors the uh, first tee program in Philadelphia. The man that heads it up, our good friend Bill Hyman the fifth. Boy, this is some event, huh? This is a great event, Harry. We are excited. This is the first one that we've done, and uh, we've had a great turnout with celebrities and company sponsors that uh, want to support the first tee. Right, the guy's doing the heavy lifting in terms of getting a lot of these celebrities. It's like the Hall of Fame out here. I mean, you know, but you got Billy Cunningham, you got Julius Irving, Aaron McKee, and Gerald Henderson, father and son. I mean, wow, Mike Quick and Gerald Henderson were with Jay Siegel, the threesome that really pulled this yeah, all off. Yeah, they played in North Carolina in the first tee event and came back and said, hey, we think we should replicate that event and have it here. And Aronimic was nice enough to host us, and, you know, it's great that they're giving back to golf. and. Gerald and Mike and Jay really put a lot of work in to make this all come to fruition. Now let's mention too the great folks here at Aronomic. Aronomic has done a great job and they are hosting us and you know have a great golf course and I think it's just great that they're able to give back to golf and what we say is golf's next generation with our kids participating in our programs. And speaking of threads, your association of course for your whole life at Huntington Valley. Chip Brewer, who is the CEO of Callaway, and Callaway also making some very attractive offers here for folks. Yes, Callaway has helped make this. Some giveaway offers. Very, very special for us. Uh, so we're thankful to Callaway and also giving back to golf. And we couldn't really be able to raise the funds that we do for our program without the company sponsors, but certainly Callaway has been a great part of that. Billy, what's the plan? Uh, an annual event? As I know the sign says, uh, you know, Welcome to the Celebrity Invitational, but uh, we're going to try to make this a year-to-year -year thing? We sure are. We're certainly going to have a second annual. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, congratulations. The first tee does so much. It's a long way from FDR Park and Walnut Lane here to Aronmick, but you know what? It shows you what the cross-section is for the game of golf and a program like the first tee program. It really does, and we have a lot of our kids that are out here. And Caddying. They are. They're going to have a great time caddying for those celebrities, and we just hope to be able to pass the word. If, if people know, individuals that want to join the first tee, we have room for them in our programs for the kids. All right. Thanks, Thank Sarah. you. Thanks, Bill. Well, one of the main guys when it comes to the first tee program in Philadelphia, Eagle Great and uh, Merle Reese's cohort in the booth, Mike Quick. Mike, uh, for you guys to have this idea, I know you had some experience with Jay Sigel and Gerald Henderson in Carolina, yes. came yeah. back and said, hey, why can't we do it here, right? Well, yeah, Jay saw what they're doing in Carolina with the first tee program, and Gerald Henderson and I, we always go down every year and play in it, and um, we got together and talked about it, and we knew that this is something that Philadelphia could do and that we could pretty much cookie cut on what they're doing in Carolina because it's a great tournament. And then you have the cooperation from the board of the first tee and their whole staff. They really made the thing happen. Gerald and I, of course, contacted a lot of our celebrity friends to try and get them out to support the event. But it really is a, 
a lot of cooperation from a lot of people that put this together. You talked about your celebrity friends and them coming out. I know they have a lot of opportunities to yeah. play in a tournament. They could play in two or three of these things a week, right. right? But for you guys to deliver like you did today says a lot about you, too. Well, you know, a lot of these guys, they are friends, and you know they have their own events, and we try and support one another. So it's always nice when they'll come through for you after you've done it for them. Right. And I see you got your on your way to the range. Yeah. What are you about a two or three now? <laughs> Over wish, at Little Mill. I'm, listen, you're I'm a wishing, legend. I'm wishing I'm a two or three. <laughs> you know, I get around okay. I won't even get into what the numbers, but I get around okay. I, enjoy, I you know, I know you do. I you and Beasley. The, and I love the game. I enjoy the game. Aaron McKee's here, the yeah. younger stud. Not that he's yeah. that young, but uh, Jaworski's here. Right. You know, Dron always shows up and. Um, Harold Carmichael's on. We're, we're going to have a lot of, have a real good feel. A lot of side uh, action going yeah. on? Well, yeah. we're going to have, we have to have side action. <laughs> <laughs> Go, you better work on that practice range, right man. Now. Thank you. Well, football was his game, but golf has become really his passion. Ron Jaworski, Joe, it's always a pleasure. Uh, always great to be with you, especially at a golf course, even better. Absolutely. Uh, talk about the first tee program. I mean, you know, as a kid growing up in Buffalo, New York or whatever, uh, programs like this weren't available, were they? Yeah, they, they did not exist at the time, and that's why uh, the first tee program is so important. You know, it, it teaches young people not only the great game of golf, but the life lessons that golf teaches us all. You know, honesty, integrity, competition, uh, you know, and, and enjoy the people you're around. Just, just so many good attributes that the, the first tee program and the game of golf treats these young boys and girls, so it's a great program. Talking to your old teammate, Mike Quick, about uh, how he was able to bring together so many name guys. And I know guys like yourself and Doc and Mike Quick, Aaron McKee. I mean, they could play two or three of these things a week, let alone, you know, a month. But the fact that they would commit to Mike and Gerald Henderson says a lot about those two guys and what they've done to put this thing together. Well, it says a lot about their commitment to community. Uh, we all know what great athletes uh, they were, but uh, I know those guys a lot deeper than most people, and I know uh, how they think and how much they love this community and how much they love giving back. And the First Tee program is a great way to give back. So it's kind of the... Uh, the coming together of a lot of people that, that believe in this community, uh, that live in this community, and want to give back. So it's really, really a fun, worthwhile day. Golf, as I said, your passion, but football is still a main part of what you do, not just with ESPN, but as the owner of the Philadelphia Soul playoff team. Congratulations. Our team finished 13-3. and We won the American Conference, but uh, it all it all goes for not when the playoffs start. It's, it's, it's one and win. We don't think of one and done. We think of one and win and move on. So we're three wins away from an Arena Football League championship here in Philadelphia. You know, it's like golf. You're only as good as your next one, right? <laughs> as an old quarterback, Harry, I understand that. <laughs> Joe, it's always a pleasure. All right. All right have Thank a great you. time. Yeah, I'll take another hit. Nice. Thank you. I think I'll stay with you. See that? I've played that, this before. Oh, hit it. Oh. Oh. Stay with us. There's more to come here on Inside Golf from Aronimic and this first annual first tee of Greater Philadelphia Invitational. In fact, up next with us, the man who was one of the organizers and a big part of today's event, Jay Sigal. For ways to raise uh, dollars outside the box. Jersey Man and Philly Man magazine, published by former Eagles tight end Ken Dunnick, is everything you want in a publication catering to men's interest. Enjoy articles on politics, business, the mob, wine, food, fitness, and travel. Written by the likes of George Anastasia, Bill Lyon, Sam Carcitti, and Mike Kern. Want to grow your business? Ask for information on our legacy and chairman clubs. They meet regularly and can be a valuable tool for your company. Subscriptions are only $20 a year for six issues. They're available at Jersey Man magazine.com Welcome back to Inside Golf here at the uh, first tee event at Aronomic and you know this wouldn't have happened without this guy and everybody knows who he is Jay Siegel. Jay you've done a heck of a job again. Thank you. You know it's had some help. We learned about this type of event down in Winston-Salem and being president of the first tee uh, we're always looking at, for ways to raise uh, dollars outside the box. This is new I uh, think it's been received very well. The celebrities love it. They love the venue. The Ronimic experience is fabulous. I mean, we were sold out early on. I'm surprised and thrilled. Right. What's your best round here at your home course, Ronimic? 62 a couple times. 62. With a bogey on the easiest hole. Irritates. Why does that always happen? Huh? It does, doesn't it? Nice, nice of you to be here. 
Jay, thank our you. Our pleasure, and thank, thank you. you. Thank okay, you. I hope to be back next year. Good deal. Hope so. Well, the beneficiaries of the First Heat program are kids like we have here today, and these are all members of the First Heat. We have DeMar McCoy here. Now, today, you're going to be out there toting a bag, as they say. Have you ever done that before? Um, not like this. I've carried my own bag, but not okay. for other people. Okay. So, do you, you feel any pressure or anything like that? No? no. That's good. All right. Uh, Alex is with us. Alex, how long have you been involved in the First Heat? About six years now. Okay, so you're a veteran. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the most important thing that you've gotten out of being involved in the First Tee program? Probably the life skills aspect, like respect, honesty, courtesy, integrity, judgment, things like that that are necessary to become a fine young gentleman or lady. And speaking of ladies, we have Phoenix. And Phoenix, how long have you been involved in the uh, First Tee program? I've been here since I was four, so really seven years. Wow. You're a real veteran, huh? Yeah. Can we get a close-up of uh, Phoenix's hat? Girls Golf LPGA USGA, huh? That's uh, maybe a goal of yours to play on the LPGA Tour, do you think? Yes. You heard from Phoenix talking about what the first T program means for her. I guess it means a lot of the same things to you, huh? Yes. <laughs> what are some of the, shall we say, more positive things you've learned as a member of the first T program? Um, like when you like try not to throw your club when you get mad. <laughs> um, <laughs> Try to um, try to redo your shot. If you make a bad shot, don't think about it as much. Okay. How do you feel about going out there today and being a caddy? That's pretty good. And Victoria? Yes. You're also, how long have you been involved? About in six the first years. Tee? About six years. What's been the most important thing for you about being a part of the first team? Well, I like the values, but they helped me come out of my shell a lot. Like when I first started, I wouldn't talk to anyone, and they kind of helped me have confidence in myself. What do you think about this event today and the fact that these people have come out here to support your program here in Philadelphia. I couldn't be any happier. I'm really grateful because without them, I wouldn't be here. What's the, what do you think the most important part of being a caddy is? Hmm, probably helping them. Helping them. You know how? Be positive all the time. All right. Thank all right. You. you guys know how to do that. Thanks, guys. Well, like I said, it's like a Hall of Fame here today, and Dr. J, Julia Serving, is uh, part of it. Doc, good to see you again. You look Thank like you. you're ready to go out there and uh, shoot a low round. Uh, team golf. Team golf. We can always get a low number with team golf individually. You know, I mean, if I get it somewhere between 84 and 94, then I'm then I'm okay. Growing up, you never played golf. I guess it was basketball and some of the other sports where yeah. pickup games were were part and parcel of what it meant to be a kid on Long Island, right? Yeah, we had golf courses around, but uh, it was few and far between. And money was Get, a factor. Getting, getting out there. Yeah, the economics of golf were, were somewhat prohibitive. So football, basketball, and baseball were, were the big three. It was only three seasons where I grew up. Well, you know, there's some guys uh, who have gone on to some pretty good games, uh, Gerald Henderson being one of them, Beasley Reese. I mean, these guys can play a little bit. Have you had a chance to go out there and sample what they can do? Yeah, I played with Gerald about three weeks ago. And Did you take he, a little money? He posted, no, no, there, there was no taking money. I mean, he's... He was draining 20 footers. He was draining more putts than he did jump shots when he played. <laughs> so. We didn't hear that. <laughs> and, and his son's, his son's not a bad little player either, huh? He's very good. And, and he's back in town so now. Happy to have him with the, with the Sixers, you know, and I, it looks like he's, he's happy to be there, here too. And I uh, wish nothing but the best for him with the 76ers. Absolutely. Doc, I don't want you to miss your tea time, all right? Okay. All right. See you, Doc. Good seeing you guys. Well, we talked about how Gerald Henderson was one of the uh, important guys in terms of getting celebrities here. Look who he landed, his own son. That wasn't too tough, was it, Gerald? No, it wasn't. You know, your dad comes calling. You, you got to be there. So, you know, I'm happy to be here. Hey, congratulations, by the way, on the new contract. You're back in your hometown playing pro basketball. Does it get any better than that? It doesn't. It doesn't. It's, it's like a dream come true, you know, playing for the Sixers team. I... Uh, watched growing up my whole life, and um, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And this is a, a pretty special day for a lot of kids. You know, they're going to be caddying for the people like yourself. Yeah. Uh, the First Tee program does a lot of good work with uh, some kids who eventually will learn a lot of lessons beyond the golf course. Absolutely. I mean, um, golf's a great game. It teaches you a lot of things, and um, you know, these kids to be a part of a program like this, you know, be able to learn all the different things you can learn from the game. And, um, you know, for them to come out here with these different players, some of the celebrities, and just spend time and 
Uh, you know, you're going to get four or five hours out here. I think it's it's a great thing for him, and it's a great thing that the first tee is doing. You know, and talking about your dad, a lot of these kids probably don't know Gerald Henderson Sr., but they know Gerald Henderson Jr., I right? So. I <laughs> hope so. You know, just trying to keep the legacy going a little bit. All right, Philadelphia yeah. tradition. Good seeing you. Yeah, you Good luck today. All right, buddy. While we're here enjoying a little game of chance with our friends from the Valley Forge Casino Resort, and a uh, little blackjack is available for anybody that wants to partake. We'll be back with more from Aronimic, but let's take a break for Teed Off from the Valley Forge Casino Resort. Up next on Inside Golf. All right, Lauren, hit me, would you? Oh, I busted. <laughs> Welcome back. Inside Golf continues now with our teed off panel. Today we're coming to you from the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. And with us, Tom Carpus, head professional, Kennett Square Golf and Country Club, also the vice chairman of the rules committee for the PGA. Joe Logan of MyPhillyGolf.com. And another esteemed panelist here today is with his new book, Bob Shepard, noted Philadelphia area golf professional and author. This one's called The Dormy House, and it says it's a fantastic golf odyssey. I'll take your word for it. Definitely. You'll enjoy it, I promise. All right. Uh, gentlemen, and Joe, I think you know the author of this article in Golf Magazine, recently came out with a list of the top, in order of 1 through 50 states in uh, the U.S. when it comes to the game of golf. There were several categories that went into figuring out who's number one, who's number 50. But the tri-state area, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, didn't fare well. None, none of those three were in the top 10 in the country. And Delaware was ranked number 49. Come on, Joe, Delaware's better than 49. Aren't they the first state or something like that? Go they were the first state in that, oh, and next to last when it comes to the game of golf. Unbelievable. Uh, I, I, you know, What's with these uh, rankings and magazines, magazines? Create lists and rankings to sell magazines. They get guys like us to talk about. Yeah, it. Talk about it on TV shows, okay. and write about it, and I would look at the, the criteria. What criteria did they use? And I can remember a few years ago in one of the magazines, Pine Valley number one plummeted all the way to number two, and the reason was they suddenly figured in number of tour events you've hosted. Well, they haven't had any tour events. They had a couple Walker Cups. Don't need it. Thank you very much. Exactly. So. Well, that's one of the uh, criteria for this ranking was tour events, majors, also, I think, percentage of population that plays golf. Like North and South Dakota ranked higher than Delaware simply because all 10 people out there, eight of them play golf. Yeah. So that got them a higher ranking. <laughs> but really, Pennsylvania, well, let me have it here. I have, I have this list. You ready? Golf courses in the world, Pennsylvania was ranked number 11, not in the top 10. And New Jersey, the home of Pine Valley, the home of Baldur's Roll, and some other great golf courses, ranked number 15. Chef. Hard to imagine. You're our, you're our guy when it comes to playing everywhere. You surprised by that? Yeah, and I, the way I'm looking at this, too, it's they, they pick and choose as they go. Like Joe was saying, there's, there's certain courses that they've eliminated or missed on here and it's on you almost have to think it's unintentional well they, you would hope or just yeah. like he said to get us to talk about it okay right, the top right. five you ready in reverse order tom Carpus, ohio now the fact that jack nicholas i don't know if that has anything to do with it but ohio is the fifth in the country south carolina some great resort courses yeah. down there no Pearl argument Beach. california they got tons of golf courses and a lot of how many tour events that I have there, about three every year. Three, yeah. And then you have Arizona, and number one is the state of Florida. Number one in, what's your assessment of that top five? Well, look, I've played in a lot of those states, but I, you know, I guess, uh, I don't know the gentleman that wrote this, but he obviously needs to spend more time in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. <laughs> He's missing the boat, because you could play. Just go to Kennett Square. He'll be your guest, right, if he comes to Kennett Square. I could give you a list of 75 golf courses in the, in the tri-state area. You could play one every day, somebody who was never in this area before, and they would walk away every day saying, wow, that was incredible. So I don't know. The criteria, I agree with Joe. It's a list. Yeah. Sell a magazine, sell a paper. 
But it, it does have a little bit of impact on some people. They say, wow, you know, a lot of pride. I mean, if you're yeah. in Delaware, you're saying, oh, wow, we're, we're picking up the rears here. Yeah. If you're in Ohio, you're number five. I mean, in Ohio, what does Ohio have? They have the Scarlet Course. Uh, that's well, that's at Ohio State. You're right. Okay. They have uh, Scioto, where uh, Nicholas learned the game. The they have Akron with Firestone, where they recently had a World Golf Championship. But, I mean, really? I, uh, Ohio has a lot. Uh, it, I can name five courses within five miles of where we are <laughs> that would challenge those five courses or those three, four courses we just mentioned. But a lot of it is That's not just based on golf courses. It's based on the population that golfs. Ohio has a lot of golfers. I lot. guess so. And it's kind of a, I mean, they have a lot of nice country clubs, but it's also kind of a, a lot of blue collar golf, if you want to call it for lack of a better term. But, but think of, uh, just think of Philadelphia. Think of the Golf Association of Philadelphia and what they do for golf. The events they have, the, the programs. Same with our section. Yeah, the section is amazing. Press to find a more active golf association in Philadelphia. I'm going to come up with a proposal, recommendation, whatever you want to call it. I want Joe Logan on myphillygolf.com to come up with his personal ranking of the top 50 golf states in the country. And by the way. If New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware aren't in the top ten, you will no longer be a member <laughs> of the panel. <laughs> of Nobody knows that but us. But you get to play all those golf courses now. That's there a good go. thing. Uh, no, but seriously, Joe, I think you ought to, that should be on your to-do list. I'll get a man right on it. Over the next six months. All right? All right. All right. We'll see what happens, folks. <laughs> Joe's a man of his word. He'll have it for us. That's it for Teed Off. We'll be back with more Inside Golf in just a moment. The Valley Forge Casino Resort is the region's only full amenity gaming resort, and it's only seconds from the Pennsylvania Turnpike at King of Prussia. It features 600 slots, 50 table games, and there are nearly 500 guest rooms, plus eight restaurants designed to meet all of your dining needs. So put the beautiful Valley Forge Casino Resort on your destination list. We're here today at Valley Beach Poolside Club at Valley Forge Casino Resort. Valley Beach features 50 tons of soft sand, a 22,000 gallon pool, outdoor seating, dining, live entertainment, cabanas, and more. This is our second season open, and for our second season, we've added some great new features. Additional sand for extra seating, an open air shack, poolside bar, and my personal favorite, the Break food truck. The Break serves up great beach-inspired favorites like burgers, tacos, salads, wraps, and more. Let's see what Chef has cooking up for us today. Welcome to the Break. It's our food truck. It's a promotion that we're doing this summer. We have awesome food. What we're doing today is we're promoting the Wipeout Burger and our Baja Fish Taco. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a roll, our burger, top it with our nacho cheese sauce, which is awesome. After that, we take applewood smoked bacon. Everybody loves bacon, especially on a burger. Okay, after this, we're going to top it with our fresh pico de gallo. It's slightly spicy. And then what we're doing, we're finishing with a lime aioli. It's juicy. That's, how, that's the kind of burger that we wanted to come up with. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a fish taco, our Baja fish taco. We have crispy fish. Then we're going to top it with a jicama slaw. The jicama slaw has mint, cilantro, ginger, slight chili, carrot, and some peppers. It's actually one of our signature dishes. Also, this gets coated with our spicy sauce, cilantro aioli. We serve it with two lime wedges, here, a little bit of fresh cilantro, voila. Hi, chef. My order ready? Oh, it looks Enjoy. great. I can't wait to dig in. And be sure to join us this summer at Valley Beach Poolside Club at Valley Forge Casino Resort. In 2008, 13-year-old Lester Bell snuck through the fence of Cedar Crest Golf Course. That's where PGA professional Aaron McGraw first met him. But back home, Lester had given up hope for a future. So Ira gave the young man a job, became his friend, and three years later, his legal guardian. Today, Lester's still golfing, and he hasn't given up since. The best stories end in thanks. Share your story at thankspgapro.com.
taking some time out from his main job of being an assistant basketball coach at his alma mater, Temple University. Aaron McKee is here. I know you love to get away from uh, your day job and play a little golf, huh? Yeah, this is a great, it's a great cause, first tee uh, program. I think, you know, the work that they do around the country um, to try to spread the game of golf, to, to bring it to inner cities, I think is, is, is awesome. I think I'm a product of programs like this um, and playing basketball and, and growing up in recreation centers where you have a, a great support system, uh, which allows you to go on and do great things in life. So I think this uh, uh, first tee program is set up great for these kids and spread the game of golf and teach them conduct and, and get to rub shoulders with some, some wonderful people. So, you know, I never had the opportunity to, to rub shoulders with, with my heroes. I, I, you know, I, I think these programs wasn't really around. Now, you look around, they have programs for baseball to grow the game of baseball. They have programs for basketball to grow the game of basketball. You have the first tee program. So it gives, um, you know, kids the opportunity to be around people that they probably normally normally wouldn't you know have the chance to be around and it's probably some of their some of their heroes but I think you know they 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 call us celebrities I think a lot of guys are a lot of guys are really humble um, I think this is the one time where you like to be you know called considered a, a celebrity because you get to use it in a good way well that's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf from this first tee of Greater Philadelphia Invitational at Aronimic and here you see the nine core values stressed by the first T worldwide. Honesty, integrity, sportsmanship, respect, confidence, responsibility, perseverance, courtesy, and judgment. And we want to also thank Jay Sigel, Mike Quick, also Gerald Anderson Sr. and Jr., and Bill Hyman V, the man who is the executive director of the first T program of Philadelphia for all of their work in helping this star-studded first annual event to be really a Hall of Famer. I'm Ari Donahue. Thanks for joining us. And remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. See you next week right here on Inside Golf. Inside Golf, presented by Destination Montco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. And by the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professionals.